Hey, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of The Homestand, the official podcast of the Kansas City Royals. I'm your host, Carrie Lipper Gillespie, and I am honored to be joined today by Royals legend Lorenzo Kane. Lo Kane, how are you doing? I'm doing great. You know, excited to be here. We are so happy to have you here. You are such a big part of Royals fans' lives. There are so many moments that involve you if you are a diehard <laughs> Royals fan. So we are just honored to have you on the show, truly. Yes, it's good to be here. You know, I'm, I'm excited to be back in Kansas City. You know, um, there's no place like it. I had the best years of my life here. And uh, like I say, it's, it's, I'm excited to get back and see everyone. Well, I want to go back a little bit before we talk, you know, about everything you accomplished in your career, because we want to talk about how you got there. You were born in Georgia, Mm -hmm. southern Georgia. um, And I don't know, this might be a little known fact, but you like you played basketball. That was what you originally like were into. Mm -hmm. And you got shifted to baseball suddenly. Tell us some about that. Um, Yeah, um, just a quick rundown. Um, I actually tried out for basketball my ninth grade year and um, I was cut, you know, it hurt me deeply, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it ended up working out. Um, so my 10th grade year, I decided to try something different. Um, and because th- with the amount of running we had to do for conditioning for basketball, I refused to try it again. So um, my mom said, hey, you're not playing football, so um, you, you have to figure something out. So I said, hey, what's left? Baseball. So I decided to go out for baseball. Um <clears throat> I remember ended up, I ended up going into the coach's office uh, at the time. I said, like, hey, coach, um, I would love to play baseball for your team. And he said, like, hey, perfect, because we actually we needed an extra player for the JV team. We were going to have to cancel the season. So uh, I guess maybe by default I made the team. But, um, yeah, now I'm here today. So it's, it's, it's definitely a great story. And, and uh, people always tell me maybe we can write a book about it one day. Oh, my God, that would be amazing. Or make a TV <laughs> show or a movie. Even yes. a book is just the tip of the <laughs> iceberg. It's so funny that you said you were deterred by the running because playing yes. in the outfield in Coffin <laughs> Stadium requires a lot of running. And you have other big parts of your career that right. you know came down to you being a speedster. So it is so funny <laughs> that you just said what deterred you was all the running. Yes, well, you know, um, quick sprints compared to long distance. <laughs> running, you know, that's completely different for me. But, uh, yeah, I had a – I remember uh, my track – the track coach asked me to come out and, and, you know, run for track or try out for track, and I told him, no, I'm sorry, I can't do it. And, um, yeah, baseball was, was it for me. I think it worked out all right. <laughs> now, you were drafted in the 17th round, correct? Right. Was that a surprise? Did you think you were going to get drafted? When did you start getting, like, attention for your baseball playing? Because you mm. started so much later in life than most people do. Yeah. I, honestly, I didn't know anything about the draft or the baseball draft or anything. I was just – I made the baseball team. I was having fun, like, and that's kind of how I took it. So, um, my 10th grade year, like I said, I played JV squad. That year, my 11th grade year, I sat the bench on varsity. And then my senior year, I started on varsity. So I guess I technically, technically I only had two years of high school baseball. And, um, yeah, I remember the day, I didn't even know it was the draft. So I'm sitting there playing, I think I was playing video games, Madden or something. I hear the phone ring, and my mom goes, hey, some some guy wants to talk to you, you know. So you know, I, I, pitched, I pushed pause on the, on the game, and um, she hands me the phone, and – it's like, hey, Lorenzo, this is so-and-so. Uh, we drafted you in the 17th round. And I just said, okay, thank you. And then I hung up. And that was the end of it. <laughs> so my mom, my mom was like, hey, who was that? And I was like, hey, some guy saying they drafted me in the 17th round. I don't know. I don't know what he's talking about. And I just went back to playing video games. Didn't think anything of it. And next few days, it was kind of all in the you know newspaper back then. And I, I was like, oh, I guess this is a big deal. And that's just kind of how my journey started. So when did it actually hit you? When it started hitting the newspaper and people yeah. were like, oh, I heard this. And you were like, oh, I guess this is a bigger deal. Yeah, I guess it's a big deal. So I ended up, yeah, I got drafted out of high school. And um, they asked me if I was if I was ready to, I guess, sign and, you know, come to Milwaukee at the time. And I told them I don't think I'm ready. I only have, you know, two years of experience here in, in high school. And uh, I decided to go to college, which... You know, that's another story because I only, I only had one scholarship offer, oh. and that was from a community college, Tallahassee Community College. And um, I went there for a year, and I ended up signing signing with uh, Milwaukee the very next year, and now I'm sitting in front of you here today. That is crazy that you got dra- – after just that little bit of experience, yes. I mean, it's just mind-blowing that you obviously were such a natural at it, and 
Do you feel like maybe because you started so much later, you had like a chip on your shoulder wanting to to prove or, or what was it that pushed you? Because it's absolutely uh-huh. unreal right. that you were even drafted after having so little experience in the sport. Right. For me, um, I remember, uh, you know, after playing on JV team my 10th grade year and then going to varsity, sitting sitting the bench bothered me very much. And during that time where I didn't play that much, uh, my senior year or my junior year on varsity, it bothered me. And I went into the summer working my tail off, doing everything I knew I could do to kind of improve my baseball game. And I just continued to work because I knew I had to learn at a faster rate than other guys, and I had to pick up things a lot faster. And I was determined to do that. And now I get an opportunity to. I had an opportunity to play for I think a total of 18 years between minor leagues and big leagues, and. And now, you know, I'm I'm just hanging out. I get to retire as yes. a Royal and won a World Series. So, you know, you can't ask for anything more. Oh, my gosh. Tell me some about your minor league okay. journey because, it, I mean, there's a lot of people who get drafted and go through the minor <clears throat> leagues, but they don't make it to the big leagues. We, like, was that always your goal? And I can tell by, like, how hardworking you are and your demeanor that that was you're going to be your goal for the get. You right. know, that was going to be what you were going to do. But when did it hit you? Like, this is this is happening. I'm moving up. I'm doing things. Like, this is this is going to be my life. Right. Uh, you know, initially, you know, I, another part, I, my first time even, you know, stepping foot on a plane was me heading out to spring training. So I'm 18 years old, had never been on a plane on a, plane a day in my life, and I'm, I'm flying to – I guess my new job. So, um, yeah, the first – I struggled the first two or three weeks uh, to start spring training. And, um, I mean, it was so bad until a point where, you know, they were asking, like, who drafted this guy? <laughs> it was it was, it was, was going that bad for me. And then I would say three weeks in, something clicked. And – because I had never faced guys throwing, you know, mid-90s, yeah. you know. I went to a small school. So uh, – but something clicked. And uh, it's so weird because I ended up winning the um, – MVP of that rookie ball season once the season starts. So it's it's just a long story of just hard work and just determination, I guess. Yeah. I want to hear some about your mom because I know okay. she's a big part of your life and she sacrificed a lot to, to take you to practices and work with yeah. you and, and get, get your career off to a good start. Even when you were young, what does it mean for her, you know, and you're the rest of your family to be such an integral part of your success. Yeah, uh, my mom was a huge part of it. Um, just, just like, like you said, teaching me about, you know, showing me what sacrifice looks like. What, you know, not only telling me, but showing me what hard work looks like. So, uh, I learned a lot from her. Um, she's always taught me to be humble, um, stay humble, stay rooted, stay grounded, and I, I feel like I, I carried that into my, through my entire life, and. Um, I remember going through this this point during my career where I felt like I was I was gonna quit, you know, because things were going so bad. I think I was in like an over over fifty slump, you know. I had never struggled that bad in my life, and I just I was just lost, didn't know what to do. And I remember calling. I said, "Mom, I, I don't think baseball's you know it for me anymore." And she said, "Well, what are you gonna do? Come back here and work at McDonald's?" <laughs> so, <laughs> I said, good, good point. <laughs> I think I'll stick it out. <laughs> I said, good point. I'll stick it out, Mom. So, yeah, she's been a huge part of my life, and uh, she's here today, and uh, I'm excited that she gets to celebrate this with me. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's amazing. It's so good to have family yeah. and like around you that will give you some humble pie yeah. and just be like, all right, well, you're really good at this, so if yeah. you're not going to do this, what else are you going to do? Yeah. I, I needed that. Yes. I needed that. <laughs> we all need that from time to time, I think. <laughs> now, you didn't start out a Royal. You started out mm-hmm. with the Brewers. What was your, you know, when you came to the Royals, what – what did you think? Had you ever been to Kansas City? Like, what was your impression of Kansas City as a whole and the Royals as an organization when you made your way over here? I didn't know anything about Kansas City. <laughs> um, zero. Um, yeah, I remember. It's so funny, too, because I remember when I was traded here, you know, I was in Miami. I remember I was, I was in Miami, and uh, we're just sitting there. And the next morning, um, my phone's just blowing up, you know, ringing out of control. And I look over, it's my mom calling I was like, I'll call you back, Mom. It was like 8 o'clock in the morning. It was early. And um, ringing is again, I, you know, he ignore. Third, fourth time I answer. It's like, Mom, what's going on? And she goes, hey, I just saw on ESPN that you've been traded. I said, what are you talking about? Yeah. Like, you know, it's like, what, what, are you, what are you talking about, Mom? She's like, no. I just saw it on the, the little ticker thing at the bottom of the screen. And she's like, yeah, you've been traded. So I turn on ESPN, and it says Lorenzo Cain and and. I see this Escobar and a few other guys have been traded for Zach Grinky, and I'm like, 
So I called my agent. I'm like, did you know this? <laughs> <laughs> did he like, know? No. He's like, no, well, I'm oh. sorry. I'm sorry. So, um, yeah. So I got traded here. And then I, I think an hour later, I'm getting phone calls from like Dayton and, and you know, all the guys in the organization. I was like, we're happy to have you. And I didn't. I didn't know what to think. I didn't know what to say. Um, so, yeah, it was a lot of mixed emotions. But, um, yeah, I, it took me all of, I think, a f- maybe a few days or a week into spring training to realize that this was where I was always always supposed to be. Yeah. Yeah. What does that feel like? Because you're getting these calls, and, and when you're on a team, you're all in mm-hmm. on, on the leadership, on the direction that the team is going, and, and you kind of are on that path and, and trusting them. And then to get a call that you're right. on, on to the next one, it's probably exciting but scary at the same time. And like you said, it it was probably it took you a little bit to settle mm-hmm. in, but what's that feeling like? It's tough to deal with because, you know, being in the minor leagues with Milwaukee, you develop, you know, friendships yeah. and relationships with guys. And I hadn't been with Milwaukee for, I think, six, seven years at the time. So, you know, I got relationships on the team that, you know, you just build that bond with the guys. And then out of nowhere, it's like it's, it's, it's kind of it goes away. And um, I didn't know how to handle it at first. But um, stepping foot into the spring training locker room in Kansas City or out there in Arizona, um, I just I had those same like that same group of guys in Kansas City, you know, the Hosmer, the Dysons, the the Moose, Salvi, of course. Um, so it didn't it didn't take me long to just kind of fit in and and figure out, like, okay, we, I have a group of guys that I can kind of relate to, um, you know, very similar to Milwaukee, and um, yeah, I'm, I was just happy to be here, and I, I knew this group was special from day one. Was there anyone, like, a first reaction? Like, who was the first one you saw? Is there any first reaction that you remember um, when you came to the locker room? Was it Salvi or someone else? That- no, it wasn't. I, I forget. I, I just I can't remember. I just remember just, you know, shaking shaking hands with everyone and everybody say, hey, good to have you over here. But I can't remember. Oh, it was so long ago. Yeah. It was so long ago. <laughs> it's so funny you mentioned Salvi. Um, and I want to talk about him some because, you, yeah, whenever you, anyone mentions Salvi, you just break out right. in a smile, right. which we love. We know you guys had such um, a really unique relationship, mm-hmm. kind of like a brotherhood almost. Like you yes. guys would joke around like brothers. Yes. Um, talk to us some about that relationship. Um, it was a great relationship. You know, um, I wasn't a big fan of the camera. You know, um, I was a guy that just never wanted – much attention I guess you could say um but as you know Salvi he has the Instagram and and I recently just got Instagram like a month ago so <laughs> so yeah that's just never been my thing um and he just would always have the camera in my face and I couldn't do anything about it <laughs> so it was it was fun um it was a special relationship um I'm so glad he was a part of this group um like I said, we're like brothers. I just saw him a few minutes ago, and it was all hugs and smiles. And, you know, he picked me up and gave me this big bear hug. So, uh, yeah, he's still a strong kid, as, as we can see. And uh, I'm just happy to get back here, see him, um, celebrate tonight, and just kind of enjoy this moment tonight. Yeah, he's one of those people that is just as special as a person as yes. he is as a player. Mm-hmm. And I feel like everyone who knows him and, and meets him knows that. He's our captain now, which we're so honored by. But I, I everyone who like meets him is like, or people ask me, they're like, is he like that in real life? And I'm like, 100%. Right. Like, he loves the game. He's a great mm-hmm. person. And that kind of radiates out through everyone else. Wow, and I could so. see that with you guys yes. when you were playing together. Yes. <laughs> There's a joy there. And how important is it to have teammates like that that, that always made it fun? He never loses sight mm-hmm. of the fact that you get to play a game for yes. a living it's um it's nice to have throughout uh, a 162 game season because you know you can go through struggles throughout the season but when you have a great group it makes it easier you know you can go to the field you laugh it's not oh we're losing oh i can't stand it here oh you know let's wait can't wait till the season ends and it's more of uh i get to see the guys today we laugh joke and we go out on the field and have fun and that group was special because I feel like we all played for each other, yeah. you know. It was it was ne- never uh, a selfish moment from anyone, and I think that's what really made it fun. And um, and I think it, it poured out on the field uh, day in and day out. When did you realize that it was a special group? Did it hit you right away, or did it take some time? It No, uh, just when, when I saw those guys play for the first time, because I didn't really know much about them, like Hosmer and Moose and – Dyson. I didn't know much about those guys. Um, a few of us played in the minor leagues together yeah. when I was first traded over here, and we were just crushing teams left and right. And I'm like, man, this, these guys can play. So I'm, you know, me and I'm the new guy, so I'm trying to keep up, you know. So 
I'm like, oh, I gotta, you know, I want to be a part of this group. So, you know, I definitely have to step my game up a little bit. Um, but, um, but yeah, I knew it in my own leagues it was special. And then one by one, you would see guys slowly getting moose and Ho- well, Hosmer moose, everyone getting called up and slowly going to the big leagues. And I was kind of like the last one. You know, I'm sitting here, I'm like, all right, well, you know, I'm playing well. I'm like, all right, my chance. You know, my turn. And I finally got my shot. And it didn't start the way I wanted because I started off with a, a ton of injuries early on in my career. But, um, yeah, I finally started to figure things out, and I was able to join this special group, and um, we did special things. You really did. I want to talk some, before we get into that, about some of the injuries mm-hmm. you faced because it's it's tough. You, the things you guys had to put your bodies through, what they do you know, downstairs, mm-hmm. I see what they go through every day. It's intense. And you did struggle with some injuries, but you had a really special coach that helped you kind of revamp your running mm-hmm. style mm-hmm. to help your body you know, be able to play longer, play better, be more efficient, basically, because right. you were running into some injuries. But I also read an article that he was saying that you were so dedicated to doing whatever you had to do mm-hmm. To play as long as you could, and right. and so while it was great to have someone like that, he said you were putting in the work day in and day out just to get that little bit as much as you could out of your career. What's it like to have those types of people along your path to help you in every little way? Because he's not a hitting coach, you know, right. he's he's a running coach, he's a track guy. Right. Um, you know, growing up, when, when you when I was growing up, you never really, no one really taught you how to do things the correct way you know um you didn't really have hitting coaches when I was growing up you know or pitching coaches you just went out there and played and you just tried to figure out things on your own so I ran a certain way I hit a certain way and that was it and I had to figure out things as 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 the time went and but when I was having those injuries during that time um I remember talking to Nick Kenny and he was basically saying hey you know, you're having a ton of injuries. You need to fix your running form. And I'm like, what do you mean fix my running form? Like, I'm I, just running. Like, I'm just running. Like, <laughs> what do you mean? Um, but, yeah, he was like, yeah, you need to fix your running form because you're always going to have injuries if you don't fix it. And I'm living in Florida at the time. And he's like, hey, I know this guy. I know, this, I know Hop in Kansas City. I know this guy also in Oklahoma. If you're willing to train with those guys, um, basically uproot from Florida and, and move to Oklahoma and figure out how to come to KC every or maybe like twice a uh, twice a week, um, you know, are you willing to do that? And I was like, yeah, I'll do it. So I basically just uprooted from Florida, moved to Oklahoma. I would come here two or three times a week. I mean, I'm running up hills. I'm doing bunny hops up hills. I'm doing stuff I've never done before in my entire life. But I was dedicated, and I think in the long run, uh, it helped me out. Yeah, can you imagine if you wouldn't have taken that, like, that feedback seriously mm-hmm. and you just would have been like no, dude, dude I'm just running like legs go forward I'm just running right. and you would have just been like I I don't have time for that I got to hit the ball I got to do these things but you were so open and receptive to that right. and it probably changed the course of your career in an incredible way 100 percent. I mean you I feel like you always have to be coachable I, yes. I think one thing I was I was coachable and um I think that's what helped me throughout my entire career um and I've always like I've loved to to take I guess healthy criticism You know, um, I love it. I don't I never was the guy that, hey, just say stuff to make me feel good. Like, tell me what I need to fix so I can go fix it. And and I'm just happy I had a group a group of people that were willing to do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want to talk more about the special group and everything Mm -hmm. that you accomplished here. Um, What do you think when you think back on that time and Mm -hmm. what you guys were able to do? What is like what are the thoughts that come into your mind? Just broad, big picture. It just it's just like you say, it was a special group. I, I missed those guys more than anything. We were, we were in a big group text as as we speak, and I just wish we could have played together our, throughout our entire entire career mm-hmm. uh, more than anything. But um, I wish I would have enjoyed it a little bit more as well, yeah. you know, because you're so focused on just winning, winning. Mm-hmm. I got to win. We got to win. We got to win. And you don't, like, take it in. It's like, oh, we're in the World Series right now. Mm-hmm. You don't really enjoy it as much as you should. But, um, but big picture, I mean – just being able to be a part of something, um, be a part of a group that that did something back to back World Series. Um, we created so many memories that I will always remember. And wild card game, two World Series, like it's just so many memories. All the locker room um, time we had together and just enjoying it, each other's time together. That's one thing I'll, I'll definitely miss the most. Yeah. Take us back to to some of those times, you know, Mm -hmm. 2014, and it it was devastating. And to be able to come back and do what you did in in 2015, what was the feeling like in 2014? Um, 2014, it hurt, you know. Um, I've 
I've most importantly, I've always enjoyed playing for small market teams. You know, when you get to play a team like the Yankees or, you know, those big market teams. Um, and just, I, I, I had I had a lot of joy out of beating those teams like that that no one gave us a chance against. Um, but 2014 was, you know, was heartbreaking to lose because I felt like that year it was just meant to be. For me, honestly, 14 was meant to be because we, the way we came back in the wild card game, um, we swept the Angels, we swept Baltimore, and I'm like, we're, we're about to win the World Series. Like, you know, that's all you think, we're about to win it. And then we ran into a guy named Bumgarner, and – he was lights out. He uh, was spectacular. I mean, I mean, he was unhittable. And I feel like he basically won that World Series yeah. for those guys. And um, But I knew uh, I knew we were going to do something special. I, d- I didn't know if we were going to win the World Series or not. But I knew 15 would be special because I've never seen a group of guys show up the very next year after losing uh, in 14 the way we did um, in, like, tip-top shape. Like, I mean, it, there you, some guys. It's always a few guys that that show up and be like, "Hey, well, he has to do more work in this area, or he has condition in this area." Everyone was ready to go, yeah. and I knew that that unfinished business that we had a great chance of going out there and taking care of it. And throughout the season, throughout throughout all the fights we had that year, and um, um, us just sticking together regardless of the situation. I knew that season would be special. World Series special, I, I was I was unsure, but I knew the season would be special. It's so funny you say that because the path is always, it's never linear, you know, the, mm-hmm. the path to success. And you look back and you can see the ups and downs and what you guys went through. But you look back and you just yeah. see how beautiful and yeah. special it was. But it takes a special group to go through what you went through in 14 and then be able to run it back in 15 mm-hmm. and put together what you guys did. I have to ask you, there's so many special moments from Mm -hmm. that year, but specifically the first to third. I'm sure you get asked about that all the time on Hosmer's single. Take us through that play. Uh, Yeah. um, You know, we had the rain delay there, so I'm already going in. I didn't want to stop playing. You know, we took a little break there. And, uh, yeah, I think I was leading off the end. I'm I'm not sure. Um, But, yeah, I get on base, um, and Hosmer hits the ball down the right field line. And I'm thinking – just get to third, honestly. That's what I'm, I'm thinking. Get to third, put the pressure on the third base coach. For me, as a base runner, I've always tried to make it as hard as possible for my third base coach to either send me or not send me. But I was going to put pressure on him. And that's probably another reason I had a ton of injuries because I was always trying to hustle. And, um, yeah, I remember just putting the pressure on Jersh. And, you know, Jersh had did, it home, did his homework. And he knew, you know, Bautista loves to throw second there. Um, even though he should have hit his cutoff, man. But um, him doing his homework, Rusty Koontz doing his homework, uh, those guys are definitely by far the best in the business. And, uh, yeah, just putting the pressure on him. And as I'm going, I'm hustling the third, and he's sending me. And I'm like, you know, in my head, I'm like, did he miss it? Like, did he <laughs> fall down or something? Like, I didn't know what happened. But, yeah, Jersh, uh, great read by him. I did my part. He did his part with the read. And – when I touched third, I kind of looked in to see where the ball was, and it was kind of going to second base. And all I was thinking was score. Get in there, and I scored, and just the excite, excitement just ran through my body. And I popped up, and I just lost it. I don't oh know. My it, was God. <laughs> it was the best. You popped up. I mean, I swear yes. you hit the you hit the sky when you popped up yes. celebrating because it was just such an intense moment, yeah. and it was so magical. People always, I mean, here it's talked about all the mm-hmm. time. It's just one of those iconic plays. Yes. And to top off an, you know, an iconic season, uh, you know, when you guys won and mm-hmm. brought, you know, championship here to Kansas City, walk us through the parade and the, oh. the fans and everything about it, because it was such a citywide celebration. What was that like? It was awesome. I mean, I've never seen so many people in one place in my life. <laughs> I was like, you know, it's so much blue. I'm like, oh, it was a lot. And um, yeah, actually, I was. I was kind of late to the parade, you know. A lot, a lot of people don't know that. I was struggling. I couldn't get in. It was no everything. Every road was blocked off, and I was like, "Where do I go?" I'm, I'm supposed to be in this parade. Let me in. And I was like first, so I'm like, "How do I get in here?" So, <laughs> <laughs> so I ended up asking the cop, "Say, hey, um, excuse me, sir, can um, can you help me get in here?" He's like, "Oh yeah, yeah, come on, no problem, no problem." And um, yeah, I had just had my kid, honestly, too, so he got an opportunity to, opportunity to ride on, you know, the truck with me. And uh, it's so weird, too, because a lot of people know during that 14 series also, I remember just uh, having to 
we swept the angels and then we, I ended up flying or driving home. I had my first kid and then I ended up flying to Baltimore the very next day. So I had met him for all of a all of four hours before I had to go. So I cried like a little baby because I wasn't, you know, my little guy. So, yeah. Um, but, yeah, it was overall just good times. Now my kids are eight, seven, and eight, seven, and five now. So just shows you how time flies. And um, I was just happy that we were able to create so many special memories in this city. And um, that's when I, I knew once I retired that I would find a way to come back here and retire. Yeah, mm-hmm. I love that. I read this article and I want to read this to you. You laughed, of course. You went, you went to the Brewers. Mm-hmm. Um, but this quote, that's when I knew when I came back and played. It said here you came back in 2018, mm. and you were playing for the Brewers and right. you hit a home run <laughs> against us. And as you were rounding yes. the bases, you said Royals fans were cheering for yes. you yes. when you hit a home run against us. So that's what it says here. That's when I knew when I came back to play and I saw it. They just showed me how much they cared about me, respected me, and loved me as a player. And I knew right then and there that I was <laughs> going to come back here and retire because you hit a home run with the opposing team. And they're cheering. Yeah. I mean, what else can you ask for? That's a yeah. quote right there. That was special. It was know? so was special. special. I mean, how many times you get to see some, you know, someone on, on, on another team hit a home run and they're cheering for you? you yes. Know? So I knew was special i knew i would come back so uh, i really appreciate it yes, yes it's so special that you were here today and that you came back you're forever you mm-hmm. know cemented as a royal you mean so much to the fans here um you're just there's so many memories that include you what does that feel like to know that a whole city <laughs> is holds you in their heart literally i mean locane everyone yes. loves locane it's yes. just i mean it's just something you just gotta just try to take in um it's hard to explain you know um you don't realize it until you, you know, I didn't realize it until I came back when I was with Milwaukee and I came back and played in front of the, uh, the KC fans that how much they cared and loved, loved me. And, um, yeah, that's why I knew that this was the place, this was going to be my, you know, place I can call home. And I, I knew that retiring here was, was a no brainer. I love it. I have to ask you about 1738. Okay. Tell us some. <laughs> I don't. I don't really know. It was yeah, just. Yeah, it, it just, just came. Out, <laughs> just came out of nowhere. I don't know. It's. It just. I don't. I don't. I don't know where to start. Um, it was something where, you know, it was a walkout song back then. Um, you know, we all just picked random crazy walkout songs. You know. Um, but kind of the fans created this. You know, how many times can you use seventeen and thirty eight together? I guess, and uh, we just kind of. We were hot during the time, so you know when you're hot in baseball, you know it's superstition, and you just kind of run with it. And I remember doing an interview, and someone, I think it was Joel, Joel said, "Hey, from uh, on a scale from 17 to 38, how much do you love Salvi?" And I said, "38," and we just started cracking up laughing. So it was just a, it was a fun thing around the clubhouse and with the fans that we enjoyed. It's still iconic. People still <laughs> like to this day. This is what I mean when I say you've had such an impact on people here when you think back on your time playing here at Kauffman Stadium is there a single memory or a single play that stands out to you that was kind of just something that you'll hold in your heart forever and really meant a lot to you or maybe it was just a special relationship whether it was with a coach or another Uh, player I feel like just as a group we all we got along so well Mm -hmm. you know um from the coaches to the players to even, you know, the clubbies, the guys that work in the clubhouse, you know, it was trainers, strength trainers. It was really like a big family in there. And I feel like that's hard to find um, throughout the entire clubhouse. So I've never been a part of anything like that. And that's why I miss it so much. And I saw everyone in there once I, uh, you know, gave a bunch of hugs and, and said hi to everyone. And it just, just felt like we just, picked up where we left off yeah. you know <laughs> yeah seeing salvi again i'm sure yes, you guys yes just went right back <laughs> i have to ask you what has life been like in retirement it's been great is it you know it's been great um i had opportunity to, to play and you know i kind of left it in the hands of my boys and i said hey do you guys want daddy to continue playing baseball and they screamed at me no oh. they screamed, no daddy we want we want you to stay home so I, I said okay then <laughs> i guess i'm staying home so uh yeah, I, I'm coaching their uh, baseball teams, basketball teams. Like, I'm like this coach now. All the kids call me coach now, so I, I like it. I like it a little bit. Um, got a few other things going on, but overall, it's been great. You know, I like to I like to go out and, and mow the grass. And, yes. You know, I'm a, I'm a guy that loves to mow his own grass. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I've, I've enjoyed it. Um, I get to see the, see the kiddos, you know, start their sports at an early, early time in their life. And, um, 
I'm enjoying every moment of it. Yeah, you get to be a full-time yeah. dad and soak in those things that you might have missed out on baseball. Right. So it encompasses your whole life. Wow. And I'm sure, you know, the people who have family and kids, there's so much that they give up in order to pursue this. So to be able to have that time mm-hmm. back has got to be amazing. Spending mm-hmm. time with your wife, I'm sure, yes. and soaking all that in. Yes. That's good. Yes. Any other hobbies or anything you've picked up that you've decided you're, uh, you like to mow the lawn? Are you yeah. picking up golf or any other like hobbies or anything uh, like that? I'm thinking about golf. Um, okay. Um, yeah, I, you know, I tried to, to golf a little bit, and but it just, it would mess up my uh, my baseball swing. So okay. I couldn't I couldn't golf and play baseball. So that didn't work out for me. But uh, I want to pick up golf. You know, I, I fish with my boys and um, uh, things like that. I'm a big go to the movies type guy. Yeah. You know, I think I've seen every animated film there is because you know I have three boys. So all the animated films we like to go as a family and go places. And we're just really starting to. Uh, have family vacations for the first time, you know, because we're, like I say, I sacrificed so much to kind of, you know, from seeing them, not seeing them, um, and now we just really get to enjoy each other and, um, you know, have that real family time. What is your favorite animated film? Oh, man. Well, we just saw the, the Mario movie, okay. which that was that was pretty good. Um, you know, we even we even go to the throwbacks with, with the kiddos. You know, we go to E.T. and, and Free Willy. You oh, know, my gosh, like Free that. Willy. So, wow. You know, I'm introducing them to those movies. So, yeah. Yes. Have they seen, like, The Sandlot and all that? Yeah, Sandlot, of course. All, all the above. So they yes. got to go back to the old <laughs> ones for sure. What has been the best part of being back here in Kansas City? Any restaurants you stop at when you come uh, back to town or anything like that, that like when you get to Kansas City, for whatever oh, reason, you're like, uh, I got to hit this spot. Well, I haven't I haven't been in any restaurants, but we went to, um, what is it, the Great, Great Wolf Lodge? Yeah, the so, water park. Yeah, I said, Jenny, it might get a little crazy here. I don't know if one person recognizes me. They might get a little crazy here, so... A few people recognized me, and it was like, okay, I'm screaming. So I'm taking pictures. We're yeah. having a good time. I mean, we probably went up and down those slides, I don't know, 50 times. I'm like, she got a good leg workout in today. So, uh, but yeah, we had a blast. Uh, we spent a little time there. But that's kind of one of the, one of our first really kind of vacations as a family. Like, I mean, I know it was there at the Great Wolf Lodge, but it was like, we got time to, you know, go go up and down slides together and enjoy each other. So um, that's hopefully the start to, to many. I would love to hear what you would like to tell Royals fans. If there's oh, one thing man. you could tell them, what would it be? Wow. Um, well, I just I, honestly, I just want them to know that to me, they're they're the best fans in baseball. You know, I mean, you see the way they just uh, gravitate to their sports. Um, baseball, I mean, football is doing great as well. You know, that's definitely. I apologize. I am a Cowboys fan. I apologize. Oh, so boo. I apologize. Let's get him out of here. <laughs> Cut the I'll tape. Po- We're I'll done. I apologize. <laughs> but uh, Chiefs are definitely a second favorite for me. You know, I, do- I definitely love watching those guys. You know, Mahomes and um, Kels, those guys, absolute beasts. And um, it's definitely a lot of fun to watch them. Um, but, yeah, uh, keep keep just being the fans that you are, you know, loving on your team, um, showing up, and just being there. And so don't don't change a thing for me. I love it. All right, we're going to get to the lightning round. Okay. These are fun questions. Don't oh. think too hard about them, all right? Okay. <laughs> What's a better feeling, hitting a home run or saving, like, robbing someone of a home run? Oof. I know it. it He's paying you guys. This is yes, hard. Yes, this is hard. Because I don't, you know, I, I wasn't a guy to hit a ton of home runs, so I want to say home run. But my bread and butter was robbing home runs. True. So I got. I guess I'll stay with robbing home runs. I love it. <laughs> what was your first job? Uh, baseball. Nice. <laughs> yes. Not a bad first job. Yeah. <laughs> what about your first car? Um. Uh, it was a Honda. Was it a Honda Civic? And well, does does bike count? Does bike yeah, <laughs> a Schwinn. Well, you know, I had a bike that when I, in college. I had a bike that I rode to class every day at first, and then I said, "Mom, I need something." <laughs> Please, I'm tired of riding this bike. Please. Help me out, mom. Can't pick up any girls riding a bike, mom. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Honda Civic. Was that much better for picking up girls? Uh, no, nah, but you had a little AC at least, you know. <laughs> yeah, I love it. All right, your favorite walk-up song of your career. Oh, I mean, I guess I gotta go. Seventeen thirty-eight. There you right? go. I think so. <laughs> Who was your least favorite pitcher to face? Oh, Max Scherzer. Really? You know, he had that uh, that combo of that, you know, two-seamer slider action. Yeah. And if anybody know me, um, the slider was my kryptonite. So, um, yeah, I didn't do well against the slider. But uh, And I think um, if we, we probably need to check the numbers on that. But I, 
I, I don't think I got have any hits against him. Oh, I don't wow. always have my face. Yeah. I don't me personally, I don't think I don't know the numbers. I hope I do, but <laughs> there's a good chance I don't. So yeah. Do you have a pitcher that you particularly liked to face that you were very successful against? Um if you're left handed, I love facing you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, any lefties, all right. Any lefties. Good yes. answer. If you have a meal to make or a meal that you're gonna enjoy, mm-hmm. say a night off, what are you what are you going with? Uh, you know, I'm I'm a big steak guy. Okay. You know, um, uh, you know, I was introduced to fillets early. I mean, later in my life. So, uh, yeah, I fell in love with the fillets, and um, yeah, that's kind of my go-to. All right. Yes. I love it. Thank yes. you so much, Locaine, for being here. You are so important to the people of Kansas City, to this organization. I'm honored to be able to sit here and chat with you mm-hmm. and to have you on the show. So, thank you so much for being here, and thank you so much for everything you've done for this organization. Well, thanks for having me. It's it's been a blast, and I really appreciate it. All right. Thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in. It's been an honor to have you all here. Make sure you subscribe wherever you get your podcasts because we'll be back with more episodes very soon. I've been your host, Carrie Lippert-Gillespie. We'll see you again soon.